morning. Welcome everybody. Feel free to come on in and go welcome to take a seat and all right, I guess we're starting. We're gonna get started here. Quick announcements before uh, we dive right in this morning. Uh, welcome to Vineyard at the River. <laughs> if you haven't been here before, we're so happy to have you. Uh, my name's Aaron Brown. Why is there such a distance? Uh, we're gonna get started. What's going on? Uh, if you're new here, we do uh, what we call self-serve communion. So communion is the time where we, we take a cracker, we dip it into the, the juice here, and we think about the, the broken body and the blood of Jesus that has been shed for us. So our sins are washed away and our bodies are healed by the power of Jesus. Hey, that's why we're here this morning, is for the power of Jesus. Yeah, other than that, we're just, we're just hopeless. So, uh, also, uh, we have what we call a prophetic director, and today that's... Um, Addy. Addy. Why did my, my brain just blank out? Patty. I keep saying Patty, but I, I'm hearing Heidi in my head. So it's, I wanted to call you Heidi for a second. I don't know what's happening. We do have a Heidi that plays on, on the worship team. She plays keys. Patty. Um, but Patty is going to be our prophetic director. Prophetic uh, is just the, the, it's the testimony of Jesus. So she's going to be sharing as she feels led by the Holy Spirit today, which is here in the room right now, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, um, she will go ahead and uh, share in between our worship time. So thank you so much for coming out, and we're just gonna get started, we're gonna open up a prayer. Holy Spirit, we welcome you, Spirit of God. We thank you, Jesus, for being here in this room this morning for being awesome and just showing up and being awesome. That's what you're so good at. Thank you that you're so real and you're so awesome and you're so here with us this morning. Fill this time, fill this church with your spirit, God. We ask in Jesus' name. invite you to just think about Jesus. Think about Jesus. Those who know the story, just think about it. Think about Jesus. Oh 
I couldn't earn it And I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away pursue us every day, every minute, every hour. Your love is hunting us down in the best possible way to give us goodness, to give us life. That we're all sinners saved by grace. That the great God of love has chosen us and chased us down. There's nothing we could do. We're all imperfect without your perfection, Jesus. But your perfection is got us. You got us. You took us on the cross and you washed us with your blood. And you cleansed us from all unrighteousness and you made us free. You made us free. You filled us with hope. Now we get to live in the wonderment of knowing you, the beauty of knowing you, the, aws the awestruck awesomeness of knowing you. Yeah. Why don't you just say thank you, God, this morning. Just say, wow, you're amazing. You're amazing, God, for chasing us down again and again. Even again, another morning of mercy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Another morning of mercy. It's hunting us down and has won the battle. You win. You win. Your love wins. Your love wins. You love us. You love us. You love us. the sky and you call the storm and you turn the wine and still the heart you choose is mine I'm in wonder I'm an awestruck wonder and you hold the stars and you paint the skies storm and you turn the wine and still the heart you choose is mine <laughs> I'm in wonder yeah, I struck wonder you're so beautiful Jesus and you hold the stars and you paint the skies Stone, but you turn the wine, <laughs> and still the heart you want is mine. Yeah. And you hold the stars and you paint the skies every morning and night. You call the storm and you turn the wine. And still the heart you choose is mine. I'm in wonder, I'm in awestruck wonder, just picture his face this morning. This last week fade away. We look in the eyes of the one who loves us, the one who burns with fire for me. Yes. And you hold the stars and you paint the skies. <laughs> and you call the stone and you turn the wine. And still the heart you choose is mine. Oh, one more time. You hold the stars. And you hold the 
the stars and you play with the skies You call the storms You call the storm and you turn the wine And still the heart you choose is mine I'm in wonder We never lose our wonder. May we never lose our wonder. I'm gonna stay wide eyed and mystified. May we be just like a child staring at the beauty of our king. May we never lose our wonder. Childlike faith has up in its place. May we never lose our wonder. Wide eyed and mystified, may we be just like a child, staring at the beauty of our King. Yes, you are beautiful.
mystified May we be just like a child Staring at the beauty of our King You are beautiful in all your ways Sweet Jesus You're wonderful Jesus Beautiful Jesus Just tell him You are beautiful in all your ways. So the beauty of Jesus, the Spirit of God that's here right now, just fill you right now, absorb into your, your very being. The Spirit wants to just walk right into you. Take away every heaviness. Take away every pain. Take away sadness and sorrow. He wants to take away sin right now. He wants to take away sickness right now. As the flute just plays over you, just let the Holy Spirit come right now. There's freedom in this place. There's freedom in the Spirit. There's freedom in the Spirit. Anxiety is is just totally obliterated right now in the power of Jesus. Wow, freedom, freedom this morning. Grace upon grace upon grace. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You're good. So much grace. the Lord's been speaking to me off and on during the service about how he values his sons and daughters who have so valued his son who have uh, who have honored him Jesus you've lifted him up we've worshipped him we've thought of him and the Lord is saying to me and I value you all who honor my son, I value them. Amen. And it's not just a statement. It's a gift. It's a feeling that I give to my sons and daughters. Because they received me in receiving my son. Thank you. When it's stormy outside, go inside. When you live in this world, you'll have good days. Everything seems great, and then a storm will come. But if you don't know where your sanctuary is, you're going to stand in the field and you're going to be subject to the elements. You need to establish the sanctuary. That's your place of rest. That's your place of love. And, and when you're in that place, nothing else matters. It doesn't matter what's going on outside because all you care about is being in love with God and resting with Him. The Bible can be summarized in one thing. Take time to love God. Amen. Uh, I'm reading out of Ephesians 1. <coughs> we are sons and daughters of the King. We are marked with His love. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished on us. It's a gift. So just open your hands up and be lavished by the love of God today. Our Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus, all because He has wrapped us up into Christ. 
as her sanctuary wrapped up. This is why we celebrate. This is why we worship him with all our hearts. For he chose you for his very own. He chose you. Even before he laid the foundation of the universe because of his great love, he ordained, he marked you with his love. You are marked with the love of God so that we would be seen as holy in his eyes in unstained innocence. Wow, come on. Think about that. Unstained innocence. Thank you, Jesus. That's powerful. I love his word. For it was always in perfect plan to adopt you as his delightful children. He delights in you. Through our union with Jesus, the anointed ones, so that his tremendous love that cascades over you with glorious grace. And as we continue to worship, let the love of God just lavish you. Let it cascade over you. Just open up. Just open up, open up to him and let him cascade in your heart. Let him cascade in those places of pain and difficulty and anxiety as Aaron talked about. Let him cascade over you and lavish you this morning because you are marked with the love of God. And the enemy says a lot of things, but he's a liar, he's a thief, and he wants to take from you. But God loves you. You are marked with the love of God. Amen? Receive it now and just be soaked in the love of God. My name is Don. I'm one of the pastors here, and I also want to welcome you. Um, you get to be a visitor here once a time, and then after that, you're just part of our family. So, um, so get used to it, okay? <laughs> All right. There are a couple of things I want to take care of before I actually speak on the things that I feel like the Lord would have me talk about today. The first thing um, I want to do, Ed West, are you here? I heard you. <laughs> Somewhere. Come here. We want to pray for um, the Hatlands this morning. Um, most of you have probably gotten the word that uh, she's uh, gotten some bad news about cancer, but uh, I want Ed to pray that we get good news about cancer, okay? So, Ed, if you would pray for the Hatlands this morning. Well, what a privilege, eh? Yeah. Come on. We have a privilege. We, we're... Hmm. The big C is, is, you know, it's such a bugaboo, right? It's like people don't even want to talk about it, even in today's day and age. But you know what? Perfect love casts out fear. And so why don't we behave like believing believers right now, like as children, and just say, pick me up, Daddy. Help me where I don't know how to pray right now. Let's believe. <coughs> Father, you love the Hatlands more than we could ever. And so we experience your love and we um, extend it towards your son and daughter right now. We come against that affliction in Jesus' name and we say to you, the Lord Jesus heals you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Wow, the Lord Jesus heals you and releases you from this affliction. Yes. And we speak life over your mortal body. Yes, Lord. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. In the church, there are all kinds of gifts that we have, and some have gifts for certain things, and so. I believe Ed, the Lord has given him a gift to pray for the sick. Yes. And so, um, this isn't a one-man show. This is a body here. And uh, as a family, we work together. And so, that's why I asked Ed to come up. And now I'm going to ask someone else up, and that's April. And April, 
as you know, we, we talk about, if we really do believe this stuff that we say we believe, then it, uh, we, we believe it outside the walls as well. And so April's going to share a little opportunity in her ministry that she's got going on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I've got my Jesus loves Norwalk shirt. We can replace Norwalk with other words. <laughs> People always treat me so nice when I wear this shirt. Or they stare and they avoid me. <laughs> well, good morning, church. My name is April Reuter. If you don't know me, I am a teacher, public school teacher. I'm an urban missionary in Norwalk and yeah. a lover of Christ. I wrote out what I'm going to say so I don't go over time. You know Amen. how that goes. <laughs> I, yeah. So here we go. For the past 11 years, I've been coordinating an annual citywide prayer event called Pray Norwalk. We've got flyers in the donut room. You can take one or pray for the event. Although I don't live in Norwalk, I've been a teacher there for the past 25 years. Wow. wow. Time to retire. No, I'm just <laughs> No, the original vision the Lord placed on my heart for Pre Norwalk came out of the realization that the needs of my students were far beyond my reach as a classroom teacher. I'd always wanted to be involved in a move of God that impacted all levels of a city. So the Lord prompted me back in the spring of 2009 to bring the lovers of Christ within the city of Norwalk together to pray away the strongholds on the school campuses and within my classroom and to invite God to heal and transform our city. Wow. But what I've been reflecting on lately, on what God has been doing through the years, you know, it's been 11 years, Pray Norwalk, interestingly enough, isn't just about the lovers of Christ coming together. Although they make up the greater majority of who's there. <laughs> but it's the community of Norwalk as a whole it's inviting people to come, share, and be blessed, whether they have a relationship with the Lord or not, which is kind of an interesting thing the Lord's made. It's kind of almost evangelistic. Um, so they come, you know, they come, they share, they're blessed, whether they have a relationship with the Lord or not, so that they can come and be zapped by the Holy Spirit. Right? <laughs> so as I travel around the city of Norwalk sharing about the event, I often say, Pray Norwalk is like the mayor's prayer breakfast without the breakfast, <laughs> and more prayer and testimony, because it's the same crowd. Same crowd as the you know State of the City event, too. For easily five or six years, I was working so hard at mobilizing the city to come to this event. I have countless stories of my experiences traveling the city and trying to connect with people. I visit the same secretaries of various churches year after year with flyers. In fact, the community chapel pastors that are on my board, I now have a board working with me, which is fabulous. I won't go into detail about who all they, they are, but they're really amazing. Um, but this church community chapel, I used to go every year and I would visit the same secretary. And she would, um, yeah, she, she would, you know, I saw her in the window and I would say, hey, can I, you know, talk with your pastors? Well, back in 2009, these pastors prayed over me. They invited me into their church and prayed over me wow. that there would be a move of God on my campus. But then after that, I was never given access to see them again. <laughs> so in 2014, sometimes you just got to be bold. 2014, I saw the secretary and I said, you know, I've got a testimony. Today I need to talk with your pastors. Oh no, they're busy. They're working on their stuff. Nope, I hear him back there. Today's the day. I'm coming in. Hey, Pastor Butterfield. So I, so I go in, and she really is the one that screens them, and I totally get that. So I shared with them. I said, I want to tell you um, what God is doing on my campus, because you prayed for me. And so I said, you know, we've got kids praying at recess for sick kids in the office and singing about Jesus at recess. So they were so encouraged that they've been a part of Pray Norwalk ever since. And they're some of my biggest supporters. So it's neat how God worked that out. Within the past three or four months, I've been visiting all the little churches of Norwalk that don't have websites and aren't typically involved in city events. And I've met with five new pastors, and they were so excited that somebody found them. <laughs> you know, yeah, we want you in because, they, you know, they're meeting in schools, they're meeting you know, in different places. And last weekend I helped with the Lions Club eyeglasses giveaway because the president 
is going to be sharing a prayer or walk this year. Wow. I don't think he knows the Lord, but he felt so honored to be invited. Wow. We're acknowledging all city organizations, nonprofits, and businesses this year. So I also helped the Norwalk Seroptimist Club. You kind of have to join all the clubs in the city. <laughs> but I'm just a vault. Yeah, it's complicated. Um, <laughs> but I, I, and, um, I mentored an event with Norwalk High School students. And um, so that was neat. So they're going to be involved. And then I stopped by. We just started. Um, they just opened up a Chick-fil-A in Norwalk, you know, walked in, and a Chris Tomlin song was playing. And I thought, great, let's invite him. So I met, met the owner at the mayor's prayer breakfast, so he's excited about being involved. But City Hall has really embraced Pray Norwalk the past few years. They often contact me. This is what cracks me up. They contact me monthly to access all the pastors in town to send out information. Our newest mayor, who actually attended the elementary school that I teach at, um, is sharing her vision for this city. I think she's a little nervous about it. We're breaking down the walls between Catholics and Christians. And so I visited all the Catholic churches in town saying, no, we are the body of Christ, come. And so she's, she's coming. And then one council member that never responded to my emails before, I think I made him feel uncomfortable. So every time, especially if you're wearing a shirt like this, um, so every time I would see him, I would reach out to him and just greet him. And he was the first person to RSVP this year. Wow. So praise the Lord. <clears throat> and then there's the school district. Um, I reached out to countless teachers, new, newer board members, our union president, and our superintendent is going to be sharing. Praise the Lord. And then we have the cadets from Southeast Academy. They're leading us in the color guard wow. um, and the Pledge of Allegiance. And we have a local woman singing the national anthem. Those cadets may not know the Lord. Uh, they don't have a Bible club on their school. But I tell you, people come and yeah. they get blessed. And yeah. they're like, oh, wow, okay. There's a different atmosphere in here. So on June 1st, from 10 to 12 at the Double Tree Hotel, not the Dollar Tree Hotel. I said that the other day. I think I go to the Dollar Tree too much. The Double Tree Hotel in Norwalk. We're having our 11th annual Pre Norwalk gathering. If you're available to come and join us, that would be awesome. Or you can take a card and just pray. Pray for the event. Um, yeah, I'd love your prayer for the details. There's still so much to do. For our testimonial speakers, we've got a Bible Club video that's being worked on, and we've got testimonies from kids. We're trying to work on that elementary school testimony. Um, that student's a little nervous, might need to put that on the video. But, um, but I'm so excited, this is, I'm gonna close with this. The biggest <coughs> church in town, New Harvest, um, has a history of doing great things in the city. Wow. And um, I invited them, probably back in 2010, to lead worship. And so, you know, it's just a journey when you do this stuff. And they finally embraced their leading worship this year. <laughs> and they, they jumped in. And um, so they're, they're not just sticking their toe in. They're fully in now. And that's exciting because, uh, we, you know, just to have everybody on board. So I'm just reminded that God is good and that the possibilities are endless. You know, my board would fit right in with this church. They are Holy Spirit people. And they're, you know, they're in, you know, they're all over the city, you know, clergy, sheriff's department, city council wow. members. And they would love this church. Thank you so much for your support. We love you. Thank you, That's awesome. You know, wherever you are, you are there because God has put you there for purpose. Amen? And sometimes we think that, that we can't be uh, who we are where we are. We have to be really careful. And it's good to be wise. But wherever you are, God has put you there for purpose. He is taking you outside the walls. We do not live in a church building. We live out there. And what we have is something that I'm going to talk about this morning that really excites me. I'm going to try not to get too excited. I'm get going excited. to slow down. If I yell, it's not because I'm mad. It's because I'm very passionate about this topic. It is my favorite topic. 
uh, in all the all the all topics that I could ever talk on, this is the one that if you ever hear me say anything, if you've ever heard any message I brought, I ask you listen to this one, ponder this one, study this one, not just my message, but the topic of this message. It will change your life. It has mine. I was talking to somebody this week.